Uh, hello, this is David Birch at Star Path School of Navigation in Seattle, Washington, with a note on a feature or nuance of celestial navigation that we need to consider when doing the plotting, the analysis and plotting uh, by hand, as opposed to using a calculator or a computer or some app to do the whole process. We're looking at an issue now that is prime is uh, exclusively a uh, something has to be checked when we do it um, by hand plotting. And we'll use, uh, for doing this, we'll use an example from this book, and I'll use it for some other examples. And this book is uh, uh, a, a series of sites. Um, let's see. Um, well, maybe I can just show you here where the voyage was. Let's see. Maybe, oh yeah, here. So this is the trip. This is a trip down here. There was a, you know, 150, 200, I don't know how many, about 150 sites, and many uh, sites taken at each time. And the book, uh, this book then includes um, uh, in, includes uh, all the data we need. And I'm going to show some examples by that. But it's got all the all the sites and. Um, all the sites and all the answers worked out. And so this, uh, the video here is almost like a video illustration for an article, and I want to, I'll come back and reference the article in the discussion. But it has to do with, um, uh, with looking at a plot, which sort of looks like this, but let me back up just a minute. Um, let me get save that. I want to save that for a minute. Okay, so here, what I've done here is just taken a bunch of the plots out of the book, just to, as a reminder of what this celestial navigation looks like as you're going across the ocean. So here comes a DR track coming down like that. And then somewhere around here at 832, that's the DR position. And a, and a site was taken, which means you have to choose an assumed position based on that DR. That was the first site here. That's 832. And then that was uh, 832. And that was the azimuth pointing towards the sun. And then there's the LOP at 832. And then the vessel just traveled on down here. And at 1400, it took another site. And that uh, had an AP up here, AP2. Now the sun, look, the sun had moved from here around there all the way around to the south. So this was past noon. Past noon, this would have been straight across at noon, so it's past noon. So it did another site. And then there's an LOP for that. It's perpendicular to this. And the... Uh, then we have to take this site here and um, this, excuse me, this site here, 8, 832, and advance it down this line by the amount we moved. So we moved that much. We have to move that site down to here. And then this is then a running fix. So uh, that's not so much the issue now. Just look what the process looks like. We have the length of these. We're looking at the length of these lines in this analysis here. And then you don't see it much, but here's a dashed line that goes between the, bet between where the DR was at 1400 and the actual fix. So that's, that's that process. Then what you do is you abandon this track, and then you start on down this track. So we go on down, and then the next navigation looks like it was done over here. Again, you have a DR at, what, um, 1307 and um, 1307. And then here's the A value for that here. Uh, where's 1307? Uh, there's a sun. Okay, so there's two lines. And they're fixed 1900. Oh, no, not 1900. I just read that wrong. 1009. And so here's the 1009. I'm sorry, the first site 1009, then the second site here. And then here was a fix. And um, and there's a distance from the DR to the fix. So that's, that's what these uh, plots look like. And let's look at the reminder scale here. That's 39 to 40. That's uh, north. So that's 60 miles. So we're looking at the length of all these lines. So this line looks like it's 20 or 30 miles long and, and so forth. 
And then let's go on down. There's problem five. You know, you know it's just doing cell nav. This, this voyage was done purely by cell nav. There was no other navigation means on the boat, period. It's from 1982. It was not an option. There just wasn't any. Uh, so let's go on down. Then here's the example we're going to use. Problem number eight. And that's the one I'm going to bring up in a minute. And here's what the issue is now on this one. Here was, uh, what was this? This is 1334. So here's 1102. Here's 1102. The boat had come down here, turn like that. 1102, it did a sight. And that, was, that had an AP here and there. And there was a sun line, 1102. And then it proceeded on to 11, 1334, did another sight. Here, the AP was here. Now, and, and these APs are always chosen. It looks like, is that chosen right? This is, this, thir this, this assumed position should be within 30 miles of that. It looks like it was real close or maybe even over. But, uh, and, um, and that happens because you see, partly it happens because the DR, the DR position is like halfway between uh, 36 and 37 here. So anyway, but here's the point I want to get to. This, this, a, this had a very short A value, a very short A value, just like from here to here. Uh, um, it's almost zero A value. And then, but then there's a long LOP, this LOP that goes clear up here. And this line here is actually very long. It is longer, and what we're worrying about here, and, and this is longer than 60 minutes. This is longer than 60 minutes long. So that is the flag that we're looking for. We want to see any line on the chart that is longer than 60 miles means we've got to double check that. We've got to actually replace this. We've got to do this twice. And that's the whole point here that I want to illustrate. That when you're doing this by hand, you have to look, not just go through the procedures in the normal way, but when you're done, look at not just the A values, but all the lines, every line on the chart, and look at how long they are. And let me show you now why. And this is the article. And then here's a summary. Here, for example, here's an assumed position. That's the azimuth line. It points to that sun or moon or whatever, sun. And here's, uh, here's this one here. Here's a, for that one. So I go down here. Perpendicular is LOP. Perpendicular LOP. So we're looking at, oh, I should have drawn that in dotted to be consistent with the other book. I'll fix that. But anyway, right now, uh, so the lines we're looking at in this line, the, the actual intercepts, A1 or A2, and we're also looking at the distance here, this line length from here to here, L1, or this line L2. If any of those get to be 60 miles or more, or even approaching 60 miles, then what we have to do is not stop when we get this fix here. What we have to do is use the value of this fix and then call that our DR and then do the site reductions again with this new DR. Not this one, but now use this one. And that will change the A values and make those lines shorter. So that's, um, that's the process. And, I want, and there's two things when the lines get long, there's two things that break down. And that th this article then outlines that. I can mention it just briefly. Let me see what I have here to show and show and tell. Okay, well, th just to do it very quickly. Wh when, when the starlight comes in and you take a sight to it, uh, this distance here is about 30 degrees, so this is about 60. This sight, this star, say, is about 60 degrees high in the sky. But everybody on this circle, at that moment, at that very moment, is going to all read that star 60 degrees high in the sky. So you don't, when you take it at a given time, given time pins that down, and then you measure 60 degrees, you know you're somewhere on that circle. So that's called a circle of equal altitude. And then intersecting two of those is a fix. And then we look at this area where, you know, zoom in on one of these, and you have this. So what we do in the process, and that, this is not in this book, but the, the principles of celestial navigation are discussed in chapter 10 of our textbook. 
Um, what we do is we, this is a, a section of that circle here, and we approximate that as a straight line. And then that goes into the GP. And what happens is, when you get these lines very long, you see you're out here, away from here a ways, then you're off that circle, then this, no, this line is no longer a good approximation of that. And there's a, the publication 229, let's just see, let me go back here, I'm going to come back. Publication 229 has this table. So its table says, for example, if, there's seven, if you're up at 72 degrees high, then that line is about a mile, is about a mile off, so you should bend it in about a mile, right? So you go out that far and you crank that thing in. Now, that table is easy to understand. Here's just a rough picture. Uh, you can just solve this with the geometry. Uh, this is actually a right triangle, and that's at 90 degrees. And that this is the, I took a case of what 72 degree high star. I mean, uh, yeah, 72 degree high star. That has a zenith distance of 18 degrees, which means the GP is 1080 nautical miles from you. So if you have 1080, uh, uh, you can approximate, you can approximate this distance here. This is a right triangle, you know, with this R plus this distance that we're after. See, there's a circle of position, there's our approximate line of position. That's the difference we're looking for, x. So R plus x is the hypotenuse. R is one side and D is the other. They've got that Pythagorean theorem, and we got x equals that. So what happens is you just plug these in here for uh, uh, x equal for d equals 45 degrees, 45 miles along here. The correction's 0.93, and for d equals 100 miles long, it goes up, cranks way up, gets big, 46. But that's big, 100 miles. So that's there. And if you go into this table. Um, and this I should probably this picture I should probably put in this article. But you see, at 72, and you're 72, and you're about 45, you're getting to be about one. If you went all the way out here to 100, you're going to have 4.6. So that's the magnitude of that correction. But we get rid of that. We we in other words, you could correct. You could actually correct these LOPs by making these adjustments, these offset tables. They're in the Pub 229, but we don't, we don't actually bother with those in our course at all. It is so much easier just to, if these lines are long, then uh, take, uh, reiterate the process once and do another uh, site reduction. And do the site reduction again. The other factor that enters in is a little bit more subtle, and it's a smaller effect, but it's an effect that happens when the A values get big. And I don't want to uh, spend too much time on it, but I have the, I just illustrated here and to direct you to come back to look at that. And we start out with some real data that you can get from the Naval Observatory page. There's a link in there that takes you to this. Uh, we call this the dream machine, right? The navigator's dream machine. This page is amazing data. And then, then I've plotted those positions. Like here's the assumed position, and here's the Markov, and here's Mars, I think. And this is what the great circle looks like. When you do a sight reduction and you get this Zn, that's the direction you were looking at the star when you took the sight, Zn. But that direction, here's the point, that direction is a great circle route like that. It's a great circle. So look at this uh, nuance of the spherical, spherical geometry here. And great circle, shortest distance on a sphere sort of thing. Here's a star that's way south of us, right? Markov in this particular moment. And if you look here, the bearing to Markov, let me go back up here, Markov, the bearing 279.8. So you're looking north of west to over the edge of the earth, right? Over the top, not the edge, over the top of the earth to see this star here that's way south of you. So there's a little tricky, we have to keep that in mind that these are great circles. Now, if I zoom in on just this part of the region here, Here's what happens. The, that direction, this Zn value you get from a site, that's exactly the same number you would get if you did a great circle calculation from here to here. Since this changes, the heading's changing all the time. And the initial heading, the way you look to look at this star, that initial heading 
is the ZN of a celestial site. And when you, when you look out that way, uh, and when you look out that way, we're, oops, we're, oh, just a minute, sorry. We're plotting, oh, wait a minute, I can't click that. We're plotting this as a straight line on our approximation, on our, in our system of plotting, we're plotting that as a straight line, whereas in fact it should be a great circle line which curves. Now, absolutely no effect of that whatsoever when these distances are small. But when these distances start getting big, 60, 100 miles, and which they can when your DR is totally wrong, right? Um, then you have to, uh, you'll notice that the straight line, the initial heading, then the real track to the body, the great circle track to the body, falls off of this line. And here's a case where 60 miles, it's four miles off. Now, that four miles doesn't mean a thing. We're drawing a line perpendicular to here, and four miles doesn't mean anything. What matters is this angle, because that will rotate the line of position a little bit. So that'll rotate the line of position a little bit. So, and, but this crude picture I did here, I, I mocked these up in the OpenCPN, which has a, that has a neat feature that you can draw rum lines or great circles, either one. Really nice feature of that program. And then, um, so, but, that, but then again, you can calculate this stuff a little more. Uh, I, in other words, this overestimates the effect. It, this doesn't really, that, if you're 60 miles off here, that angle is not that big, it's smaller. And here, if you go back to this paper, I did some calculations. It shows that at about 60 miles, you have to go out, this start 242.3 in that case, 241.3. You have to go 80 miles before it's one degree. But even like 0.8 degrees at 40, 50 miles, 0.8 degrees, that rotates that line. That rotates your LOP that much. And if the next value, this L1 or L2, this, you know, if then on, if on top of that then, these lines, are, in other words, we're talking about this line. But if these lines then are also long, then you start getting errors in your fix. Again, that's a long story about what to do. Um, what to do, I mean, what, what to look out for. And the, and, but the answer is easy here. The answer is easy. If any of those lines get to be, and again, this is doing it by manual plotting. Manual plotting. This doesn't come out if you're calculating the intersection. So manual plotting. So the answer is if you get something that's like 60 miles or more, then redo, then just take that, uh, I'm going to do an example here for you. You take that fix that you get, call that your new DR, and do the site reductions again. And you will get then, and it'll home in on the results. Now, and I'm just going to illustrate this quickly because you can come and study it on this paper if you want to. But this is an example from the Hawaii by Sexton book where I'm going to disregard the disregard the running fix. All of, you know, we're moving the whole time. And so every site was a running fix. So, but in this case, we're taking problem eight and then just assuming we're dead in the water. So that gives us a fix here. You know, there's the two lines, gives us a fix. And that's the one we want to test because this line is so long here, right? This line, this should probably be curved. It should be curved back down around. Okay, and um, this is not going to matter at all in this one. Uh, okay, so then, uh, so here is this, and then when we redid it, when we redid it, uh, the second iteration, it moved the, oh, it moved, moved the position from here to here, which was about three and a half miles. So that's the magnitude of that effect, was about three and a half miles. And you could say, well, that's not very much in the middle of the ocean. However, we are always teaching and presenting celestial navigation to get the absolute best you can out of it. So three and a half miles, throwing away three and a half miles, is a huge, that's a huge uh, mistake to make that you could get around by just mi making that correction. So that is the main, that is the main points I wanted to make with this article, I mean with this video. And uh, then you could come back here to get the details. Plus if you look here, you can get the, um, the work forms and check all these things and get some practice with that.
just practice with celestial fixing if you want to. The other final note to make, which I mentioned, I mentioned briefly, is if you calculate this, you use a calculator program like our star pilot. Is this linked to the star pilot? Yeah. So here's one program. That's our own. Uh, uh, that's our own star pilot. It's a navigation tool, piloting, mostly for piloting, but the state of it's certainly state of the art celestial uh, program. Then, then when you calculate this, you don't have to worry about these effects. Not at all, because the programs solve for the fix one way or sometimes uh, the both ways, like in the star pilot. So you can, um, it'll iterate. It'll basically do that, what we just did automatically. So a good navigation program will take the DR that you tell it, if it asks you for one at all. It'll take the DR that you tell it. It'll do a fix. Then it'll actually, without even telling you what it's doing, it will then change that fix to the DR, find a new fix, and see if it changed. If it changed, do it again, do it again, and it'll iterate in and home in on this. So if you're doing this with a calculator, um, you don't have to worry about it. You'll get right straight to it. And then what we did here at the end of this paper is just to show you that's the case. We take the raw data and just outright calculate it, and we get the right answer right away. We don't have to iterate it as we do with the plotting, which you could also say is another argument for doing the site reduction with a calculator. But as we know, as we recommend, you have to know how to do it all by hand at some point. That's only practical. Well, I'll stop there. Uh, the article has more details and cross-links for related subjects.